seven marquee marks. Parametric integration. Uh, let's just get straight to it. Yeah. So we want to find this area R. How do we do it? Now, one thing that students always um, say is, why don't we just use the parametric formula, integral y dx dt dt. Now, guys, the reason I don't promote these things is you have enough to remember, okay? So we stick to basic principles and then we figure it out, all right? There's already way too many things. It's not physics. Yeah, we're not here trying to remember 10 trillion formulas. If you use the formula booklet, you've not revised enough, okay? So how do you find any area? To find any area, what you do is you integrate some function of y with respect to x, don't you? Yeah. So for example, if you're integrating, say this curve was, I don't know, it's going to be bad, but imagine it was y equals x squared. All right. You would integrate x squared dx between your limits. All right. So that's why we put y here with respect to x. All right. Now, obviously here, our y's are in terms of t, okay? And we also need to consider these limits. We're going between whatever the x value is at 0, which is obviously 0, and wherever the x value is at p. So we've got to figure those out, okay? So the limits, very important. Let's think about what our x limits are right now, okay? So let's focus on the limits. So to find these limits are when y is 0. y is 0. So when y is 0, we have 2 sine t is 0, but we can cancel out the 2. We basically have sine t is 0, which your t values, when you do inverse sine of 0, you get 0. Then to work out your secondary value, you do pi minus this, which is pi. You can see those are our values here. Okay. Now we're not done. Guys, we need to know which one of these t values correspond with which x value, which is why we have to work in the Cartesian, the Cartesian plane first. Okay, so when t is 0, what's the x value? We're just going to plug in here. 0 plus 0. Cool. So here, t is 0. Now when t is pi, what x value do you get? You'll get 3 pi plus sine of pi, uh, which is 0. We know uh, sine t is 0 at that point. So here, this x value, if I just remove the p, is 3 pi. Okay, And here, t is pi. OK, so this integral looks like this. It's the integral of y, but y is 2 sine t dt between x is 0 and x is 3 pi. Okay, so that's the first thing you write down. And now, sorry, that's not dt. That's dx. Yeah, we're just copying over. I just replaced what y is. Now we're like, okay, I cannot integrate a function of t with respect to x and with x limits. So now we're going to start moving over to the t plane. Okay, now how do we do that? We're going to have to change this dx into dt, okay? How do we do that? We take this, and we're going to have to differentiate it, okay? So we have x is 3t plus sine t. So we can differentiate dx by dt. 3t differentiates to 3. Sine differentiates to cos. So timesing through, we have dx is 3 plus cos t dt. And that's going to slot in there. So let's do a vertical line. We have the integral. When x is 0, when x is 0, t is 0. Write it explicitly, because sometimes you're going to find that this bottom limit is uh, the bigger one. Okay. Now, if you look at the graph, t is 0, t is pi over uh, 3 pi, you can see the graph is moving this way, because parametrics are defined along the curve rather than x and y individual coordinates. So here we have t is, so when x is 3 pi, t is pi. Of y, which is 2 sine t, times this. 
Okay, and we're nearly there. How do we integrate this? Most students would expand the brackets, okay? And that's fine. Or, it's all about knowing different ways of doing things, guys. That's how you become more intelligent integrators and that, in it. So, you could treat this as a power function, a pavan function, all right? You just think about, okay, what did someone differentiate to give me something like this? I noticed that what's inside differentiates to something like this. Cos differentiates to something like sine. Obviously, you've got minuses and, st minuses and stuff. We'll deal with that in a second, okay? So, if I'm going to integrate, if I think of this as power 1, if I integrate this, this is like my differentiated bracket. All my students know this, know this is the angle, yeah? Uh, if you are interested in my full courses, then there's links in the description. So when you integrate, that differentiated bracket, we're doing the reverse chain rule. That's going to disappear. And my guess, now it's an educated guess, it's not really a guess, I just call it a guess, is that this bracket here is going to go up by one power to squared. And then you differentiate it to check. Okay? So, we differentiate what's inside the bracket first. That becomes minus cos t times bring down the power to then we knock one off the power 3 plus cos t. And I don't know why I've written cos t. Cos t differentiates to minus sine t. My bad. And then we knock one off the power. Okay, so you differentiate what's inside here. Yeah, then you bring down the power, knock one off the power. So what does that give you? This is minus 2 sine t, then we have 3 plus cos t to the power of 1. So that means this integrates to this. But, look at this. We wanted positive. I have minus 2 sine t, so I'm going to times by minus 1. Alright, so uh, we just have this as our integral and we have pi and 0. So I'm going to keep that minus 1 on the outside of uh, this, of, of my square bracket. So we have negative of this, but I'm going to keep the minus 1 on the outside, and we have 3 plus cos t squared between 0 and pi. And then we're just going to sub things in. So we get minus, sub in pi. <sighs> cos of pi is minus 1, right? Yeah. So minus 1, so we get uh, 3 minus 1 squared is... Quattro, right? 3 minus 1, 2 squared, yeah. Minus something in 0, cos of 0 is 1. So we get 3 plus 1, 4 squared, 16. So that gives me minus 12. The negative of that is 12 units squared. And that's how we do parametric integration for 7 marks. So guys, there's quite a lot in this. You know, we looked at how to do parametric integration to find areas. We start with the Cartesian, then we work our way out. Um, we looked at reverse chain rule, making an appropriate guess to do your integral. Uh, and then we came to our final solution. So if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content like this. And yeah, like I said, if you are interested in my full maths courses, we're going to be doing um, paper practice very, very soon with my main students. Uh, there's a link in the description if you're interested. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.